What's up, Barefoot Nation? This week, we are talking about carnivorous plants, frequently called carnies in this video. Thanks to my friend, John Adams, over at Modern Design Aquascaping, who is a certified aquascape contractor. Regardless, um, his passion for carnivorous plants was infectious, just like this poison ivy. Okay, that, yeah, um, it's infectious in a good way. <laughs> Let's just go. So here is where I'm going to be planting all of these carnivorous plants from Plant Delights Nursery. Um, this area I actually dug out all of the soil down about a foot and it's basically from the edge of the patio which there actually are some bricks you can see here. The rain just kind of washed the peat moss up. Um, so you can see from the edge of the patio and these bricks here all the way to the aqua basin and down about a foot is so i tried not to disturb the roots of the sable but this is all peat moss now peat moss let me go on a quick aside is terrible for the environment um, they have to destroy arctic wetlands or peat bogs to harvest it the reason that i had this opportunity to use peat moss and do this is a it's a small area and b i was when i if you watch the raised bed video, you will see that I went to my local nursery and asked for all of their bags that were shredded and, you know, basically too damaged. So the carnivorous plants all need a pretty specific air environment. And so basically I've tried growing them in containers. And I think what it really boils down to is if you don't have absolute full sun, don't even bother. Don't even waste your money because, or um, if you're in their native habitat, you know, and basically they, um, they'll they grow for you. So I'm gonna plant the Venus fly traps first because I want to, because basically these stay pretty short and they're not gonna block any views of the water feature. So with the Saracenia, I'm gonna have to keep that in mind. So as mentioned guys, it's really digging in peat moss, you don't even need tools really so i'm um just and again it's it's pretty uh it's moist so it's it should be kind of that perfect environment for these plants i think it's the potato vine that's got all these roots at the surface level but i'm not exactly sure so just being super super gentle with this guy you can see that it doesn't really look like there's much of a root ball here. So that whole part was all off camera and this is not fully planted, but one of the things that I'm going to make sure that I'm doing with this is, you know, some plants you can get away with planting deep. Some like to be planted deep. Um, all these carnivorous plants, I'm making sure that they are slightly elevated and above the soil surface. So I'm going to kind of, um, hopefully raise this little guy up a little bit. But again, I'd be worried to kind of disturb the roots. I'm also noticing guys with the peat moss, it's developing this kind of algae on the surface, which is interesting. You can see it's, you can see the slight change in color. So um, I find that interesting. And then the excess soil, I'm just kind of taking and putting near the lip of the aqua basin. Um, I'm not gonna be doing anything with it i don't think it needs water because the peat moss is still pretty damp or always has been damp so i'm about 90 percent sure that these roots here belong to the sweet potato vine um i don't know i'm a little hesitant i have to say to plant where it's going to be in direct competition with such an aggressive plant so i think i'm going to have to just send it okay so there's a dramatic before and after <laughs> All kidding aside, um, the Saracenia I'm going to have to kind of place in the container and see where it's going to... I need to kind of step back before I plant the Saracenia. I'm sitting on the chairs near the fire pit as you can see. But um, that is going to block potentially the water feature in time. So that plant is eventually going to block the waterfall a little bit in time. I was planning on having it go in there. South is that way, so the sun kind of will go in um, and really hits it most of the day. So this is another viewpoint for the water feature. Totally different view. So that's basically how it's ended up, guys. 
the Saracenia got planted right there, and then I have the two Venus fly traps right there. So now, if these two Venus fly traps end up growing well, ideally I would like to have a third one right there, super close to the water, and almost have like a clump of Venus fly traps. That would look so cool. Um, but that's going to be predicated based on if they do well, if they don't, we'll have to see what happens. The Saracenia is definitely, at some angles, going to block this waterfall. So even though this is a simple water feature, the fact that from one angle, sitting here, eventually this, the um, carnivorous plant here is going to block this waterfall, just be kind of like a veil almost, as though my fingers are a veil. Not so much, but you know what I'm trying to say. So you'll kind of be looking through that and then you'll get to see the hopefully nice big lush patches of Venus fly traps. I just kind of wanted to mention too that long, these long couple shoots that you saw kind of throughout the video on that pitcher plant. Basically those are pitchers that were put up in shade. And so if you're getting pitchers that look like this, you know that it's in too much shade. Now, this just got planted and it just came from the nursery, so I know for a fact. So that's not a good indicator. You have to wait until it puts up a new pitcher in your garden to see if it's getting enough light. But generally, they're not gonna do too many of these long, spindly green ones before they just die. These Venus fly traps, I think, are pretty similar, that if they don't get what they need, they'll just die pretty quickly. Hopefully the inverse is true, that if they do get what they need, then they're gonna grow like wildfire. So I just wanted to make a quick mention here. This picture here has actually colored up beautifully since it's been planted. So um, that's a pretty good indication that they're gonna get what they need here. And again, if that's the case, I hope that they grow accordingly. All right guys, I hope you learned something. Hopefully now you guys will have a bit better luck with uh, success with carnies. Do me a favor and go check out John's YouTube channel at Modern Design Aquascaping. Tell him that I sent you. And if you wanna see more of my content with beautiful things like these heliconias, super tropical flowers, water features, bamboo, all whole nine yards be sure to smash that subscribe button and tap the bell and if you like this video that you're on right now be sure to drop it a big old thumbs up drop it a whew, that was bad <laughs> drop it a thumbs up and then let me know down in the comments if you've ever had a crack at growing carnivorous plants in your garden all right guys see you next week thanks for watching